got your favorite toy here that you love like a child and um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you utilize the Vortex Brewer for? Um, well I use, I, I use this particular one, the, this is a Vortex and other companies make uh, similar versions of this. It's all based on uh, cyclone type of uh, motion to the water so the, the key to um, how many organisms you can bring to life and support in a liquid environment that they might not necessarily prefer is based on dissolved oxygen. So for this particular size, when you're using a small machine like this, this is the one that I personally have, you know, just through my own trial and error, have found is uh, is the, the most effective. The cyclone action will hold the largest amount of dissolved oxygen, which allows me to do a little bit more concentrated teas in this than, you know, say your five gallon bucket with an air stone, which works. Uh, you know, it's just how many life forms can you support in, in the number of gallons that you might have. And then especially when we're doing treatments where a lot of this stuff can be diluted quite a bit, that means, you know, this 30 gallons might actually be able to spray, you know, 300 gallons if we're using a 10% dilution. Whereas if you're using five gallon buckets, that 10% dilution really wouldn't contain enough microorganisms to make it that effective uh, you start to lose the, the efficiency of it um, totally so what type of teas would you be making in here to build organisms for like what are some of your top situations that you would want to multiply organisms to grow life um, it really depends on what, you're, what, what we're trying to accomplish so um, the, the first challenge, I like, guess, starting with like taking a clone and putting it into soil. The first challenge that you have is that most commercially bag mixes, even if they are an organic based, and most of them aren't, most of them are based on uh, sterile media. So that would be uh, peat moss, cocoa. Um, there's really not much in them. They hold moisture very well, and they have they, they have the right uh, um, they, they you know they say they hold the right combination of moisture, and then they dry out and allow oxygen, giving your soil. Uh, breathability and, uh, and oxygen to the roots is important for all plants, or most plants, which are bog plants, it's not mm -hmm. that important, but for us, for cannabis, it's really important. Um, so for, for starting out with mixes that are commercially blended, which is really, and it, it, I, I, ideal is in a backyard, we've got pure, rich, beautiful compost that we've made ourselves, and it's got a complete ecosystem in it, but that's not realistic for a commercial scale um, what we end up with is even if they are organic based they were quick batched which means if you were to take out say a wood particle in an organic based um, uh, organic based soil blend and you snap a little piece of that wood in half what you'll see is that the outside of the wood looks dark and broken down the inside of the wood is raw uh, it's because they're quick batched they're doing it as fast as possible to pump out the material so a lot of those things don't have like a, 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 an established ecosystem in the soil um, and that is just like our uh, our gut our digestion and you know, many people would say a lot of our immune system exists in our gut it's the same thing for the plants in that in, in the soil that their roots um, going out into that soil that is their digestive tract that's their that's their um, resistance to diseases that's their vitality that's uh, you know their, their nutrients how fast how hard how big they're going to grow um, uh, you know, your, your, your kid raised in Iowa on meat and potatoes and corn versus, you know, your kid raised on McDonald's is you're going to have different growth rates and, mm. and health characteristics of those two things. So the, the, um, the brewer is a great tool for being able to introduce whatever microorganisms might be lacking in the soil. So uh, for something like taking the, an original kind of a, a relatively sterile mix, uh, that just came out of a composting or just came out of some sort of a purification process or industrial process uh, the first thing is, a lot of times is introducing like an entire ecosystem into that soil including all kinds of di different organisms and uh, those organisms all have all kinds of different roles that they that they play and, and many of them will play different roles um, they will break down nutrients they will uh, uh, create all kinds of antagonistic enzymes for pathogens. Some of them will attack 
pathogens. Uh, they'll, they'll attack molds, mildews, funguses. Um, um, others will create basically their uh, as a product of their life, their, their life cycle. They will actually uh, create enzymes that are, uh, you know, like like a pellet penicillin for the soil, um, competing with other organisms. Uh, a lot of them pr produce growth hormones. Um, so they actually will have a, a, a direct relationship with the plant where they're saying to the plant, I want more of what you're providing, uh, which in a lot of cases is glucose or just uh, living space. Um, you know, they, they colonize the roots. They want more area to colonize as they, uh, as they, uh, as the population increases. So what they will, they'll create as a side effect of their, as part of, part of their life cycle, they're actually creating growth hormones that encourage the roots to grow. And that's where you see on, on a lot of the advertisements for, you know, for the, the stuff that you find in hydro stores. You know, they'll show you pictures that you know, enhances root growth and da, da, da. that's what they're, what they're doing. One of the modes of action, how that happens. Um, so with that, I, I just have a question right there. Is so essentially instead of purchasing bottles of growth hormone or enzymes or amino acids, you can, which are all basically byproducts of biology, yes. byproducts of fungus, byproducts of bacteria mainly. Yes. Um, you can grow that bacteria and that fungal colony inside of this yes. so that you don't need to spend that money um, on things in a bottle at the grow store. Absolutely. Right? And so then in that, um, one other nice thing I understand about uh, something like the vortex, because it allows you to create so much life in such a small area, um, what does it take relative of compost to put in here? So for instance, let me back up a step. You mentioned earlier that in our backyards, it's really easy for us to have a big pile of compost, right? And we can use that compost and we can plant right into that compost and it's full of biology. But in a scenario like this where we have 1.2 acres and we have a sterile medium going out and we need to get that big bulk of compost in there without needing the big bulk, like um, how much compost would it take to mock up a batch of this? Um, it it kind of depends on how you want it. There, there are two basic approaches to that. One is basically finding a large supply of pure, clean, just explosively alive compost and literally washing it with oxygenated water. Um, and then the other approach is to basically this, looking at this more as a petri dish, we introduce those organisms, um, they basically come in the form of a, of a, of a dust, is what it, what it appears to be. Um, you're introducing the microorganisms that you want selectively. Uh, picking species by species and then you're basically giving them the foods that they would that the food required um, and the oxygen for their population to not only wake up from the dormant state that you purchase it in if you're you know buying that at a hydro store or you're ordering that from a scientific supply type of place um, you're sticking it in there basically with a food supply and oxygen and causing that population to grow in here without actually using compost itself um, are the two basic approaches so with with like rinsing of compost um, man it, the more the better as long as long as your as long as your oxygen levels are high enough to to keep all that stuff alive and your your uh, your dissolved your your ppms are low enough um, that's but that would essentially equate to the same amount of compost. You would need mountains of compost if we were just washing that compost and just pulling off yeah. what's there, temporarily keeping it alive and then feeding it in a liquid solution. You would still need a lot of compost yeah. to do that versus... Not commercially feasible. Yeah. Versus where you'd grow, you'd actually grow life in this and multiply life in this by something as simple as a powder that you can drop in here with some glucose, be it a molasses, um, in there and that will multiply that and you'll get I mean in this 30 gallons it would be representative of like a, a mountain of compost Talking about like yards of compost as far as the amount of biology that this can contain from from my own experiments and they're you know I'm, I'm not a biologist I'm not a trained biologist so my experience you know my experiments are probably pretty rudimentary compared to what they would do but in, in my experience 
yeah, you, you are able to produce five to 20 times as much life. When you look at that under a microscope, the, the you're looking at how many you know hundreds or thousands of organisms you're able to identify in one field of view based on whatever magnification you're using, and you will find that the, the rates of doing it that way are, are much, much higher than they are in compost. But compost is the more diverse um, biology in a lot of cases. You know, I mean, the, the, what we're dependent on with that other, uh, the limiting factor, I should say, of, of the other method is that a lot of those organisms are not able to be put in a suspended state that is then able to be put in a bag and sealed without oxygen and put on a shelf and transported by truck and da 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 and then sold so the there's a lot of organisms that just won't take that uh, but they will live and propagate readily in soil so i think a combination of the two is is kind of the ideal if you're if you're doing both of them in, in combination with each other so you're taking things like worm castings and clean uh, organic compost uh, really biologically rich organic compost and washing that while at the same time adding some of those foods and then supplementing whatever additional species you might want um, in a little bit higher concentrations usually a lot of those are the ones that are um, are antagonistic to, uh, to to pathogens pests diseases things like that um, but then it can depend too I mean if you're if you're trying to break down your soil faster like you use what's in your organic blend faster then you, there are certain organisms that will um, increase the rate of decay of a lot of that stuff um, a lot of them are what create the amino acids that then make the minerals in the soil that are insoluble able to be taken up by the plant you know, when you, when you introduce things like green sand and and calcine clay mount merlinite um, all those type of things that have like a really concentrated mineral they have, they have a really diverse concentrated mineral content but none of those minerals are able to be readily absorbed by the plant amino acids are what make those available um, so you know, picking and choosing the species that you want that are going to you know that they have a tendency to produce amino acids I want to say bacillus subtilis is one of those um, increasing things like that at certain times during the life cycle so as we're going into flowering and we want them to be able to feed heavier then we might add a combination of something that would include a handful of bacillus strains and possibly lactobacillus strains as well that those are you know, able to survive pretty adverse environments and they break down things relatively fast and you'll recognize those from from uh, milk and yogurt and if you look on the back of a yogurt thing lactobacillus they're the same ones that exist in our stomach and help us digest food so it does the same thing for soil so basically it, it, it all depends on what you're trying to do